Let us pray. Father in heaven, thank you, Lord, for gathering us in your house today, Lord, for walking with us every day, that you are with us in each moment. You are our Lord, the Almighty God. Fill us, Lord, with the Holy Spirit, and let us be a one spirit filled church today, Lord. As we study and learn to live and love like our Lord Jesus, help us to be humble, to be faithful, to be available and teachable. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Uh, in continuation of a series started by our beloved Pastor Jerry, uh, Learning to Live and Love Like Jesus by Following. And the title of my message is How Jesus Dealt with Temptation. So, the text was read by my beloved wife earlier. Yeah. If you may, we may read it again and join me to read it. If you have your Bible, use it. If you don't have one, why? <laughs> in the English Standard Version, in my phone. <clears throat> so hard to read by the, mm. it's so hard so yeah a bible is a requirement now it's mandatory to, <laughs> so i'll read it and jesus full of the holy spirit returned from the jordan and was led by the spirit in the wilderness for 40 days being tempted by the devil and he ate nothing during those days and when they were ended he was hungry the devil said to him, If you are the Son of God, command this stone to become bread. And Jesus answered, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone. And the devil took him up and showed him all the kingdoms of the world in the moment of time, and said to him, To you I will give all this authority and their glory, for it has been delivered to me, and I give it to whom I will. If you then will worship me, it will all be yours. And J Jesus answered him, It is written, You shall worship the Lord your God, and him only shall you serve. And he took him to Jerusalem and set him on the pinnacle of the temple and said to him, If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down from here, for it is written, He will command his angels concerning you to guard you, and on their hands they will bear you up, lest you strike your foot against a stone. And Jesus answered him, It is said, You shall not put the Lord your God to the test. And when the devil had ended every temptation, he departed from him until an opportune time. The title of the message today could be the temptation of Jesus, or how to effectively resist temptation, or the right way to resist temptation. But for me, it will be the lessons to be learned on how Jesus dealt with temptation. So if you, if you may, I may ask you, how many of you have been tempted to sin? Honestly, you can raise your hand, be honest. Good number. How many of you have given in to the temptation and sin? Not all, eh? Not all are honest. <laughs> well, the truth is, we all have sinned. We all have been tempted, and all of us failed. For it is written. 
Everyone falls short to the glory of God. All have sinned. Somehow we, we've done this, uh, like we try our, for ourselves, try to resist this, ineffectively. And now we ask, what's the right way? So if you go back to the scriptures, chronologically we know the birth of Jesus in Bethlehem. The childhood of Jesus, not, not much was uh, said in the Bible. And so when he, when, spoke, when he was born in Bethlehem, and then uh, the next... The next uh, thing we know about Jesus here is his childhood, uh, when he was 12 years old, in the temple, teaching the elders. Mm -hmm. It was when Mary and Joseph lost track of him for a few hours, and Jesus reminded them that he's doing his father's business. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It was uh, the time when Jesus was preparing for his public ministry. First, he, he comes to the Jordan River, was baptized by his cousin John, and he was baptized. The Holy Spirit comes upon him in the form of a dove, and the Father speaks audibly, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. Yeah. So if you think about it, after the dove came the devil. When he was baptized, he was blessed. After the blessing came the temptation. So why was Jesus tempted? We know, we all know that Jesus was God. And because he was God, he cannot be tempted with evil. Mm. And the reason is for us to know that we have a God who knows what's like to be tempted. Mm -hmm. In Hebrews 4.15, if uh, Daryl can type it, book of Hebrews chapter 4 verse 15, It says, For we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, but one who, is, who in every respect has been tempted as we are, yet without sin. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Let us come boldly to the throne of grace to find mercy and help in our time of need. The central idea of my message tonight is when Jesus was tempted, he did not use his supernatural powers, but he faced it as a man. For us Christians to resist temptations effectively, we must study and learn our Lord Jesus Christ's example. On my personal experience before when I'm not a Christian yet at that time, and I think that every temptation is an opportunity. Uh, some of you may know Oscar Wilde saying, I can resist anything but temptation. Before if something is appealing, I'll just do it. Of course, the I will uh, harvest, I'll reap the consequences of doing such things. Those things made me a miserable person. Until that time that uh, I heard the gospel that gave meaning and gave purpose to my life. And you know what the purpose? To serve the, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. <laughs> But being a Christian is not the end. It starts again with 
the more temptation comes to try to separate us from the love of Christ. Temptation comes in attractive packages. That's why it's tempting. Let's uh, look at the definition of a temptation. An enticement to get a person to act contrary to God's will. Well, if it's not con contrary to God's will, it's not temptation. It's a blessing. <laughs> so, how do we overcome it? Oh, one more definition. There's no temptation without a tempter. So, the tempter, an intelligent being that is completely evil, and is directly involved in perpetrating evil in the lives of individuals as well as the whole world. If we may flash uh, the book of James chapter 1 verse 12. Darrell, please. James chapter 1 verse 12. here. Blessed is the man who remains steadfast under trial, for when he has stood the test, he will receive the crown of life, which God has promised to those who love him. In this version, blessed is a man who endures trials. Can we flash it again? Blessed is a man who endures trials, because when he passes the test, he will receive the crown of life that he has promised to those who love him. If you don't notice the word, uh, instead of temptation, it says test or trials. Uh, I remember one time here when I think it's Pastor Ramil Tapel who have, uh, made a sermon here and made a differentiation between a temptation and a test. Temptation in Tagalog is tukso. And a test or trial is pagsubo. If it's beautiful, it's temptation. If it's ugly, it's a test. Maganda, pagsu. Patani pagsubo. Amen. If you give it to that either way, it's against. It's yeah. contrary to God's will. Yeah. Well, if, uh, back to James chapter 1 verse 12. There are three good news in this uh, text, in this verse. Okay, let's meditate in this uh, verse. Number one, the good news is temptation can be endured. Yeah. Amen. It can be overcome. It can be resisted. Number two, there is a reward to the person who endures it. It says, he will receive the crown of life. And number three, you will be a happy person if you resist temptations full. And it's an amen. So, in, we, in studying... Jesus' example in this uh, scripture, I've come up to six questions and I'll start with number one. Oh. Number one, where does temptation come from? Where? The answer, the devil plays a part. But you play a part as well. When there is no desire in our part, there is no temptation. It takes two to make a successful temptation, and you are one of those two. I remember a dance which says, it takes two to tango. In James chapter 1 verse 14 to 16, it says, but each person is tempted when he is lured and enticed by his own desire. Then desire, when it has conceived, gives birth to sin. 
and sin, when it is fully grown, brings forth death. Do not be deceived, my beloved brothers. And there's a saying too that opportunity knocks once, but temptation beats on the door every day. Yeah. And it comes to the young and old, men and women. Yeah. It comes to new Christians, it comes to old Christians. So, everyone. We are all going to be tempted. It's not a sin to be tempted. As the saying goes, it's not the bait that constitutes temptation, it's the bite. There's always a way out. If you wow. don't bite, whatever's the bait, how attractive it is, it's yeah. no point. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, I'll, I'll give an example. When I watched a, a, a magician in Netflix. He experimented on like four kids, ages uh, six to eight, I say. Then uh, Everybody knows what's an interrogation room in a police uh, precinct, right? There's a one-way mirror, there's a table, there's a light, and then a child would sit. The magician said, here's a marshmallow in the table. Oh, he said, I, I forgot something, I'm gonna grab a... a he said that he'll do some magic, but he needs something that he forgot. And he said, just leave this marshmallow on the table, do not touch it, do not eat it, just leave it alone then. So he goes back to that uh, one-way mirror and <laughs> observe yeah, the yeah. child. Five minutes has passed, the child is already sweating. <laughs> he, he wants to touch it. Oh, I won't touch it. Ten minutes, he took a bite. <laughs> and then fifteen minutes passed, he ate. Like the four kids did the same thing. Then he asked each one, one lied, he said, I didn't eat it, someone <laughs> One admitted, but he said, I only took a bite, but I couldn't control it. The third cried, he said, I couldn't resist it. The only fourth one was, the other one was smiling and he said, can you give me more? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, another tempting uh, instance uh, of my personal experience. When you need a car and you're shopping for a car and you go to a, a dealership, you always come out with a new car. <laughs> so you have other plans. You say, I'll save for something like a used one. And, no. Once you get into the dealership, they have it ready for you. It's like going into a trap. I mean, if you're not decided yet, don't go there. Just my advice. Amen. 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 We're deciding. Yeah. It's a blessing. It is convenient to always blame the devil. Have you heard that excuse? The devil made me do it. No, the devil cannot make you, as a Christian, do anything you do not want to do. He cannot. It's always when you cooperate. Can you flash 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13? This is a very nice verse. It's worth waiting. <laughs> I'll just give the spoiler. <laughs> there you go. No temptation has overtaken you that is not common to man. God is faithful and he will not let you to be tempted beyond your ability. But with the temptation he will also provide the way to escape. The way of escape, that you may be able to endure it. Amen. This is the same uh, verse, uh, the same uh, mm. version. No temptation has overtaken you except what is common to humanity. 
God is faithful and He will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you are able. But with the temptation, He will also provide a way of escape so that you are able to bear it. Amen. So, the answer is, there's always a way out. Maybe just simple as the door to go out. Or there's always an exit sign. Now, the second question. The second question, when does temptation come? When? The timing. As we have uh, studied in the scripture, after the blessing, after the baptism of Jesus Christ in the Jordan River, then temptation comes. The trial follows. And beware. My brothers and sisters, after the church service, you will face temptation. But uh, the good news is I will show you, I'll give you the, the right way to resist effectively. We are all vulnerable when we think we're strong and then we realize we are weak. In Proverbs chapter 16 verse 18 says, Pride goes before destruction. A haughty spirit before a fall. Yeah. If you remember from the Bible that uh, Peter's arrogance uh, is started in the upper room, saying he will not deny Jesus. Of course, he denied Jesus three times. Number three question. Who does temptation come to? Not who does, not you. It's who. <laughs> to those who are brand new in the faith, and to those who are a threat to the kingdom of darkness. Just like little babies, they are vulnerable. So we need to watch them carefully. We need to watch them. You have to care for them. You have to nurture them. If we are constantly being tempted, chances are we are on the right track. Mm -hmm. But if you can't remember the last time you're tempted, beware. Maybe you're on the same track with the tempter. Yeah. Yeah. And number four, how does temptation usually come? How? Temptation usually comes, it enters in the doorway of our mind. In 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 3, says, But I am afraid that as the serpent deceived Eve by his cunning, your thoughts will be led astray from a sincere and pure devotion to Christ. So in those uh, flaming arrows, about ungodly thoughts come towards us, we must keep our guards up. In 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 4, For the weapons of our warfare are not on the flesh, but have divine power to destroy strongholds. We destroy arguments and every lofty opinion raised against the knowledge of God, and take every thought captive to obey Christ. We simply don't entertain the thought. Those ungodly thoughts. It's a uh, John Dryden says, better to shun the bait than to, than to struggle in the hook. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, but it's a common problem to all of us that we love to go shopping like our. I don't know, it's man and wife love to go shopping, especially the wife. <laughs> oh, they have a, a new word today. Instead of window shopping, they call it browse. 
browsing. It's everything. I just copied this joke. <laughs> the, the wife, I don't know if you heard this, uh, I watched the YouTube. <laughs> the wife loves to go shopping. And the husband said, don't go shopping, my dear. You end up buying some things which you don't need. No, I'll just go browsing. Mm. Browsing. Of course, he came back with a new dress. And Why did you buy a new dress which you don't need? She said, honey, when I got into the store, it's so fitting to me. And someone said, it looks good on you. So why not try it? So she, she tried it. There's no harm in trying. And then, you should have persisted and say, get behind me, Satan. <laughs> I told him, I, get behind me. And he said, you look at the back good too. <laughs> so, uh, <it's> just, <laughs> uh, uh, so we don't, we don't go shopping when you don't need a dress. <laughs> Number five, where is the best place to be when you are tempted? <laughs> Answer? In the will of God. I remember the Pastor Emil Ayuno's uh, message, <coughs> Jesus and prayer. Those whole messages, when you pray, you are in the will of God. If we may think about it, when where was Jesus when he was uh, when he was tempted? He was led by the Spirit to the wilderness. It's always in the will of God. He was always in the will of God. Jesus is the only person who ever lived that can honestly say, "I always do the things." that pleases the Father. Of course, we can't say this. But often we bring temptation upon ourselves. And necessarily we are out of the will of God. In those instances when we hang out with the wrong people, in the wrong place, and we end up doing the wrong thing. And then we ask ourselves and we wonder why. Like if you are, if you are an alcoholic, you have a uh, struggle, you struggle with alcohol, don't go to the bar. If you go to the bar, absolutely, you will smell that alcohol and say, I'll just taste this and then you'll end up drunk. Yeah. If you have a struggle with lust, don't open those porn sites and say you can control self. Absolutely, you will fail and be lured to doing something which is against, which is contrary to God's will. Even in the Bible, going back to Peter, he denies Jesus three times. During that denial, he was in the wrong place. Because some of the disciples fled. Yeah. He left and he blended in with the crowd. And that's the wrong people he was with. The wrong place. And he ended up doing the wrong thing. And to, the best place to be is in the will of God when temptation comes. So the best way to hide is always pray. In the scripture that we have just read, in the state of hunger and thirst, Jesus was tempted by the devil to command the stones to become bread. How Jesus dealt with the devil? As I said in the, in the central idea, it says he faced it as a man. He did not banish the devil. He could have, but he did not. He did not airlift himself and uh, out of the situation he was in. He, uh, but instead he occupied the ground, that ground that we too occupies, and he comes back with a scripture. It is written. Yeah. I'll emphasize this. It is written. Yeah. Uh, it, let's uh, write it in the heart. It is written. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. And this comes from a scripture in Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 3. Amen. The first temptation offered by the devil to Jesus. If we go deep, 
get deeper to it. It's uh, simple as putting the physical thing more important than the spiritual thing. <coughs> yeah. It's not evil to eat food. It's not a wrong. It's not wrong when you eat to live. It's wrong when you live to eat. It's not wrong to have things either, but it's wrong when things have you. Amen. Putting the physical above the spiritual. That's the first temptation. So, what we learn is uh, be literate with the Bible and always be ready to answer with a verse the word of God. Yeah. The second temptation. All of this can be yours. Just give me what I want. Jesus did not dispute the statement of the devil. <clears throat> For of course, Satan is the God of this world. It's the what the Bible says here. This offer The second temptation the devil offered Christ to avoid the cross. I don't know what comes up to Satan's mind would he will dare tempt our Lord. And in Deuteronomy 6 verse 13 the scripture, the scripture say you must worship the Lord your God and serve only him. From this uh, text, it says, we get the, the message that you serve what you worship. When Satan uh, tempted Jesus Christ in this, giving all the world to him, If only if he will worship. He didn't say if you will worship and serve. Just only worship. But from our Lord Jesus Christ's understanding, and when he said it is written that you must worship the Lord your God and serve only him. So that means whatever you serve, you worship. Yeah. And caution to all of us. The moment of worship leads to a lifetime of service. A moment in the altar of adultery would lead to a lifetime of regret. And the third temptation. This time, Satan got the, the trend. He also said, it is written in Psalm 91 verse 11 to 12, Let's, uh, can you flash it? Psalms 91 verse 11 to 12. orders concerning you to protect you in all your ways. They will support you with their hands so that you will not strike your foot against a stone. Only Satan is, he knows the Bible. He knows more than uh, uh, most Christians probably. But he misuses those verses. And Jesus answered in Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 16. So, it's a warning for us that a biblically illiterate Christian is a vulnerable Christian. We, a Christian is indestructible until God is 
finished with us. And that's the time we go. And then we're done with our testimony. But until that time, we are indestructible, indestructible. In Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 16 says, Do not test the Lord your God as you tested him at Massa. You shall not, or another version, you shall not test the Lord your God. You shall not put the Lord our God to the test. It's always that we need to trust in the Lord, not test the Lord. But you know that there's one time that the Lord ordered us to test it. If we, if you are familiar with Malachi chapter 3 verse 10, it's the only time when God ask to be tested. If we go to Malachi 3.10, we can see that it's the only time that God asks to be tested. And it says, bring the full 10% into the storehouse so that there may be food in my house. Test me in this way, says the Lord of hosts. See if I will not open the floodgates of heaven and pour out a blessing for you without measure. And my last question Number six What is the primary weapon we should use to resist temptation? Answer The word of God It is written In Hebrews chapter 4 verse 12 For the word of God is alive and active Sharper than any double-edged sword It penetrates even to the dividing of soul and spirit Joints and marrow It judges the thoughts and attitudes of the heart In other version, you can read it If you can flash it, uh, Darren Hebrews, 12, uh, Hebrews 4 verse 12 For the word of God is living and effective and sharper than any two-edged sword, penetrating as far as to divide soul, spirit, joints, and marrow. It is a judge of the ideas and thoughts of the heart. See how powerful is this. If we proceed to Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10 to 18, I'll, I'll invite everyone to, let's read this one together. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10 to 18. Okay, let's read this. Finally, be strengthened by the Lord and by His past strength. Put on the full armor of God so that you can stand against the tactics of the devil. For our battle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the world powers of this darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavens. This is why we must take up the full arm of our God, so that we may be able to resist in the evil day, and have him prepared everything to take your stand. Stand, therefore, with truth, like a belt around your waist, righteousness like armor on your chest, and your feet sandaled with readiness for the gospel of peace. In every situation, take the shield of faith, and with it you will be able to extinguish the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation, and the sword of the Spirit, which is God's word. Amen. Isn't it wonderful? So we are fully protected. And what I want to emphasize is if you get the full armor of God, better know how to use it. You have a shield of faith. And 
aside from the Word of God, all of those other armors are for defense. Have you seen someone hit or attack with a helmet? No, you don't attack your opponent with a helmet or a breastplate. What do you use? A sword. So we use a sword, a sword. And that's the word of God. Even belt, belt of truth. <laughs> and those coming up to you are flaming arrows of ungodly thoughts. You have to defend it with a shield of faith and attack it with the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. So every time, just uh, like the communion meditation of Pastor Milita Pell, the devil always accuses us. The devil would say, you're a sinner. God won't forget. God won't forgive you. Now, if you know the answer, you say, it is written in 1 John 1.9. Yeah. If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. yeah, the devil would flee from them. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then he comes back again and he says, God condemns you. What will you say? It is written in Romans chapter 8 verse 1. There is therefore no, now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Amen. Another thing, he will say, you're not going to make it. You'll never follow Christ. It is written, John chapter 10, verse 28, I give them eternal life, and they will never perish, and no one will snatch them out of my hand. And that's a promise that is good as done. And another one, it is written in Philippians chapter 1, 6, And I am sure of this, that he who began a good work in you will bring it to completion at the day of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Even in those instances when we feel that the world hated us, we can honestly say, it is written in John chapter 15 verse 18, and Jesus told us, if the world hates you, know that it has hated me before it hated you. So um, of all the temptations, of all the tests and trials, there is no greater example of someone who succeeded and Never fail. It is our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And I would uh, highly suggest that we label our hearts that says property of Jesus Christ. Yeah. I would love that. Because when every temptation comes, Lord, your property is under attack. <laughs> so, but you need to, Lord, help me. Lord, give me the strength. You should ask. Because our Lord Jesus Christ, in John chapter 15, verse 20, said, Remember the word that I said to you. A servant is not greater than his master. If they persecuted me, they will also persecute you. But if they get my word, they will also keep yours. Another nice promise, another excellent promise of our Lord. And for my conclusion, First John chapter 4, verse 4. Little children, you are from God and have overcome them. For he who is in you is greater than he who is in the world. Jesus went for the cross and he died for our sins and he shed his blood and he rose again from the dead and he will come and live inside of us to give us the power to resist temptation and to give us the power to live a life that honors God. And for our closing prayer, I may invite everyone to stand up and pray together. Father, we thank you for loving us. Lord Jesus, thank you for dying for us, rising again from the dead, and now you offer eternal life to those who will believe. Thank you for offering a complete forgiveness of our sins. 
at that condition that we must believe. We must invite you into our, into our lives, O oh Lord. We invite you into our lives. Help us, Lord, to do that now. Father, we pray that you give us strength to follow you and learn from you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.